Good morning. Glad to see all your smiling faces. It's exciting to be uh, here this Sunday and start a new week and continuing in our series on connecting the dots. How many of you guys got a lot of those right? Anyway, how, how many of you, you can get it right, but it takes you to like the last second? And how many of you are like, no, I know from the first, you're lying, all of you. No, I'm just kidding. But, but that's how life feels sometimes. It feels like we think we know what something's supposed to look like, but we never know for sure until the dots start to connect. And they're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Uh, we, we've been in the series all about how to connect our faith to, to something that matters, something that's meaningful, something that's purpose-driven, something that can change your life. And how do you have a real faith that is authentic and that is life-changing and that can withstand the storms of life? And, and we're, we're connecting the dots between all those things because it's super important to have a faith that is not only a faith of your parents, for those of you who maybe have parents that are Christians and grow up in church, but a faith that is your own, that, that you can stand on. And, and so before we jump into this week's lesson, I got a story for you. Um, when I was in eighth grade, where are my eighth graders at? Yeah, there you go. That, that's some excitement. That's what I wanted to hear. Let's, let's try that again. Where are my eighth graders at? Okay, I'll take that. Eighth grade, yeah. When I was in eighth grade, uh, my dad announced that he was going to retire from youth ministry, which meant that for the first time, my dad was going to be doing something that I had no idea what, what that would do to our family. I didn't know what it would look like for my dad to no longer be working at the church that I had grown up at. And so for me, I was like, okay, well, at least he was, he was a middle school minister, so I at least got to finish eighth grade with him there. But then over the next few years, uh, my dad didn't quite land in where he was going to be permanently, and so everything was kind of up in the air. Money was a little tight. Um, I remember when I had to go on trips for the church, uh, there was times I used some of my Chick-fil-A money for that. And uh, I remember times where it's like Christmases, like we probably wouldn't have had much of a Christmas had it not been for kind people in our church who kind of knew what was going on and anonymous, anonymously gave Christmas gifts to us. And I'll never forget that. But I, I remember the uncomfortable feeling of like, what's next? Like there was some, you know, it was up in the air whether or not we were going to stay in Joplin. So I was, you know, worried about, am I going to have to leave all my friends? Am I going to have to start over at a new school? It was tough. I, the, just not knowing where I stood, not knowing if where I was at was going to be permanent was tough. And, and, and there's, if there's any guarantees in life, it's that there are going to be tough times ahead. Tough times will happen, and you're going to wonder, what am I supposed to do in this? What, what is God doing in this? Like, w when you have tough times happen in life, it, it often brings about questions. It brings about um, the idea, does God really care? Does, does God see me? Does he, does he see what's happening? Is God really capable of, of seeing me through this tough time? And many, many of you guys, uh, you, you've gone through tough things. You've gone through things that no one should ever have to go, to go through, especially at your age. And maybe you've had to ask those questions before. You've had to ask some tough questions because of tough circumstances. Some of you you haven't quite gone through something like that yet. Maybe, maybe you're like, well, actually, life's pretty good for me right now. Everything seems to be falling in place. Um, but just heads up, the only guarantee in life is that tough, tough times will come at some point. So how, how are we going to respond? How are we going to have a faith that can withstand those tough times? Um, and and how, how do we know that God is actually still up there connecting the dots for us when we feel like all the dots have fallen to the ground? When we feel like there's, there's not really a, a big picture here. It's really easy to lose sight of the big picture when the dots that are currently connecting don't seem to make a whole lot of sense. We don't see the clear picture. We don't see maybe what God is doing. It can have us, you know, start, like I said, question God. But it can question our other relationships. It can make us question all kinds of things about life. And so it's really important to, to know how, how do we answer that, right? Now, before we get super into this week's message... I want to just start out by saying something that is sometimes missed in these conversations. And, and it's something that, you know, I, I think about when we have these conversations. And, uh, and I wish people made a little bit more clearer to me at times. But it's the idea that God doesn't cause bad things happen to you so that your faith can grow. Okay, there's a, there's a very big difference between a bad thing happened and God will use it to make your faith grow. And... God caused this bad thing to happen so that your faith can grow. Does that make sense? There's a difference between those two ideas. I, I want you to know God doesn't cause bad things to happen in your life just to punish you. God doesn't 
allow, like he doesn't make bad things happen in your life just so that you can have the opportunity to grow, right? Bad things happen because we live in a fallen world. Sin brings death. And because of sin, sometimes bad things happen to even good people. And if you have more questions on that kind of stuff, I've done videos on our YouTube channel about it before, so go and check those out if you have more questions about that. But how, how, do, we, how do we sustain our faith in, in the midst of tough times? And while God doesn't cause bad things to happen, what we'll discover today is that He is with us in those circumstances. He cares about us. He feels what we feel. He can understand it. As we'll talk about, Jesus has been through it. But God promises that no matter what you're going through, if you let him, he'll use it to do some pretty awesome things and your faith can grow tremendously from those circumstances. So, as we get into that, we're actually going to be talking through um, the life of Jesus and something that happened in his ministry. And, uh, and so to kind of set the stage for what we're going to be talking about, um, when Jesus was on earth, he had friends, uh, disciples, and he had people who, who weren't necessarily his disciples, but were still close friends with him. And he had a, a group of three siblings named Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And this siblings, uh, I almost said pair, they're not a pair because there's three of them, but this group of siblings, they were close to Jesus, and Jesus spent time in their home. Jesus was friends with them, and, uh, and Jesus really cared about them, and, and they cared about him. So, uh, one day, Jesus is out doing his ministry. You know, he's, he's teaching people, performing miracles, all the cool stuff. And word gets to him that his friend, Lazarus, has fallen deathly ill. He's very sick. And Jesus, we need you to come heal him. Okay? So, what any good friend would do would immediately drop what, what they're doing and run and, and help their friend, right? That's, that's, so, Jesus does not do that. And it makes you wonder, what's, what's he up to, Right? Well, Jesus actually delays getting there. He finishes what he's doing. It's important that he finishes what he, what, what he was doing. And then he ends up coming a few days later. Um, and uh, turns out Lazarus died. He got there too late. And I think what Martha says to Jesus is really insightful and really important for us to recognize. Because her response to this, I think, perfectly summarizes what often we feel in maybe the attitude we should have when it comes to these kinds of things. But in uh, John chapter 11, starting in verse 21, this is what Martha says to Jesus. She walks up to him. She says, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. Now let's, let's stop right there. How many of you, when a bad thing has happened, you've gone, God, if you were powerful and you cared, you would have done something about this. Right? I'm, I'm, I'll raise my hand. I've thought that. God, I know you're all powerful. God, I know that you can see all things. Why aren't you stopping this? And it's a very real question. It's a very real emotion. Maybe a little bit of anger. Maybe a little bit of bitterness. Hey, God, what are you doing? I know, I know you can do something about this. Where are you at? And, and Martha's expressing this. If you had been here, I've seen you heal people. I've seen you heal strangers. If you had been here, your friend, my brother, Lazarus, would not have died. But verse 22, she says, But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. She kind of holds this, this tension and balance where it's like, on the one hand, I'm angry with you. If you had just been here, if you just cared, if you had just shown up, things could have been different. And that's often what we feel when we're going through some tough times. But on the other hand, it's, But I know you're still God. I still have faith in you. I know you can do something about it now. But sometimes situations stay the same. Sometimes God intervenes in our circumstances. He does a miracle. He does something great. He fixes the situation. Sometimes he lets us wrestle with it a little longer. Sometimes God's got a different plan that we can't see. And he's connecting dots that we don't see yet because we don't have the whole picture. Sometimes we don't ever get the whole picture until we're with him in heaven. But God's doing something that we don't always understand. And Martha's response was this honesty. Sometimes I feel like we fall into either one of two camps. Either like we're super Christians and we're not supposed to be angry at God. And we're certainly not supposed to say that we're angry with God. We're supposed to be better than that because we're Christians. So I'm just going to pretend like everything's okay. There's that option. Or many of us turn to the other side and we're just angry. We're like, God, I know you could have done better and I, 
I don't like you right now. I'm angry with you. And, and then what we don't realize is it's, it's okay to be honest. God can handle our anger. God knows what it's like to feel pain. He knows what it's like to feel all the things that we feel and to go through tough times. And, and so we can be honest with him. He can handle our honesty. But we can still maintain our faith at the same time. That I can't tell you how many times I've been in a situation where I've been like, God, I don't know what you're doing. I'm mad at you. I want you to just fix this. But I love you and I'm submitting to your will whatever happens. Right? And, and you almost kind of have to bite your tongue when you say that because you know that God is in control but you don't know what he's up to. And it's that lack of control on our part that often frustrates us the most. But Martha has, I think, that perfect balanced response. And, uh, and here's what I want you to know. Knowing Jesus changes everything. But we've said that every week in this series, and it's true. Knowing Jesus changes everything. And in this circumstance, it was particularly beneficial because check out what happens next. Okay? And before we read on, I want you to see, this is, this is what graves look like back then because they look different back then than what we think of when we think of a, a graveside. Like, they had like these big caves and like rocks and like they would cover it with a big like, not really a tombstone, but a tombstone. It, it was a little different back then, but they would roll this big stone in front of the opening to seal it off. Okay, So that's what it looked like from the outside and often, you know, on the inside it was kind of big. It was kind of like a, okay, you can see this person down there in there. So the, it, it was there's different spots in there for people to be buried. And so, um, you know, odds are Lazarus probably wasn't the only one in there. He might have been. But, uh, but that's kind of what, that's what burial grounds looked like back then. And so Jesus, you know, he, he comes up and, uh, and he, he, uh, he goes. And before he does the miracle, check out what happens in verse 45. Um, or, or sorry, Jesus, I'm going to skip ahead a little. Because I'm, I'm not going to read the whole story. You can read the whole story. But, but Jesus ends up calling Lazarus out, right? If you've grown up in church, you might have heard the story. But Jesus weeps with everybody. It's this powerful verse. It's the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus weeps with everybody over them mourning the loss of Lazarus. And Jesus was his friend. And so he mourns with them. And, and, and it's important insight because it lets us know that even though bad things happen in our life, God is with us and he feels what we feel. He, he, he doesn't rejoice in our suffering. He suffers with us. He, he feels with us. And, but then he goes up and he, he calls Lazarus out and Lazarus comes out probably all mummified like, you know, all wrapped up and, and it's probably right out of a horror movie and everybody's probably freaking out a little bit. But he comes out and, uh, and it's kind of incredible. But this, this is what I want you to, to remember. In verse 45, this is what happens. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, what happened? They believed in him. Now, here's the thing. If you let God, he will use tough circumstances to grow your faith and the faith of those around you. Because if Jesus had come and just healed Lazarus, or, or maybe he'd, he'd handle the whole situation differently, the people that then saw what he did and believed in him probably wouldn't have been there. They probably wouldn't have been there to mourn his death. They probably wouldn't have been there to grieve. And they probably wouldn't have seen the miracle that Jesus was able to do through it. And here's the thing. Jesus has the, the power to, in your tough circumstances, the way that you put your faith in him despite the, the tough circumstances can make believers out of other people too. Because as Christians, we mourn differently. We grieve differently. We have a hope that transcends beyond our circumstances. We have a hope that outlasts the things of this world. We know that the things of this world will fade eventually anyway. And so as Christians, we grieve differently. We still grieve. But it's not a hopeless grief. And we have the ability to, by our testimony, by the way we live out and handle those situations, to be able to turn heads and make people go, what, what is different about those people? They're able to see God working in, in just the way that you respond. And so, tough times, they, God can use those to certainly grow your faith, but they, he can use them to grow the faith of those around you as well. Tough times are, are opportunities for you to let God work. And, and sometimes, it, it's okay to be honest about our feelings. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to grieve. But God promises 
that he's going to be with us. And if we let him, we'll see him do some pretty powerful things. Tough times can help your faith grow. It's a hard lesson to learn because none of us wants our faith to grow in that way. Most of us are like, God, I get it, but can't you just like make my faith grow a different way? Well, this is a five-week series, and we've talked about three different ways so far, and we'll talk about another way next week that God can grow your faith. But this one in particular is another powerful way that God uses. It doesn't mean you have to enjoy it every time. Although James would argue with you, and James, he, he says, consider it pure, pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. Like, that's tough. Um, but God does use tough times to grow our faith, which is pretty powerful. It's pretty awesome. So, um, I want you to just kind of respond how Mary did. One, I want you to be honest. Whenever you go through tough times, whether you, some of you, you're going through tough times right now. You're going through things that maybe you'd just rather not talk about. Maybe you need to talk about it. But you're going through something tough. And, and maybe if you haven't gone through something like that yet, you haven't gone through something that really challenges you and shakes your foundation, you probably will at some point. So, when it happens, just be honest with God. Be honest about how you feel. You can't process how you feel until you're honest about what you feel. So be honest about it. God can handle it. Secondly, look for him in the situation. Look for God. Because oftentimes, God will reveal him in, himself in, in a way that we didn't expect. And as he connects those dots, it will make our faith grow. So, so be honest with God, but then look for him in the midst of those tough times. And sometimes... It just requires something as little as a prayer that says, God, I trust you, you're with me, and I trust that you can use this to grow my faith. You mean, I'm mad at you, I don't understand what you're doing, but I trust you and I trust that you know what's best. I trust that you'll grow my faith through this, through this situation. So tough times can grow your faith. And uh, I want you to think about that. Maybe, maybe it's something that you need to talk about with your small group. I, I invite you to, to share your honest feelings uh, to share about what you've gone through in the past. Maybe some, maybe some of you are on the other side. You've seen God do some miracles in your life because of a tough time. Maybe you're not there yet, but maybe your story can encourage others around you. Maybe even if there is no happy resolve at the end of your story yet in regards to what you're going through, maybe, maybe still being there in the struggle will, will allow you to have people in your group who can sympathize with you, who can be with you, who can pray with you. And maybe it will encourage somebody else who is wrestling with the negative emotions of a tough time but hasn't processed them yet, hasn't been honest, maybe your honesty can inspire somebody else in your group. So I encourage you to share because tough times can grow your faith. So as you get ready to go into your small group, I want you to think, what's one way you can remember that God is with you in tough times? What's a way that you can remember that God is with you in tough times? I'm going to pray and you'll be Mr. Small Groups.